Hello everybody, my name is Marlene Gebhardt, I'm a Canoe developer and I'm going to show you the new distributed software debugging feature. So the main goal of the feature is to integrate the software debugging process into Canoe. So we have software I'm developing in my IDE, like here on the left, and we have a Canoe or a Canoe for software. In Canoe, I simulate other components and I can test the software with Canoe. So I'm running a software in the loop test with Canoe here. But from the Canoe point of view, the software is just a black box and Canoe can access the software over some specified interfaces. But with distributed software debugging, we loosen it up to some kind of white box and we use the debugger for that. So this gives, this gives us two main features. So first, we can couple the debugger and Canoe. So that means whenever the debugger stops the execution of the program and goes in a break, the Canoe simulation will also go in the break. When the debugger steps, Canoe simulation will step um, and continue as long as the step needs and so on. So that the debugger, the execution of the program and Canoe doesn't diverge logically. That's the first point and the second one are the watch expressions. So we can transfer the watch expression into Canoe to analyze them and work with them and have a closer look at them. Okay, then also good to know is that distributed software debugging was released with Canoe 15 in Service Pack 3. Um, on the IDE side, it's available as a plugin for Visual Studio, but coming soon is Visual Studio Code and Linux support. Okay, so enough with the theory. I want to show you the feature in an example. So in my example, I have three temperature values or three temperature sensors, and I have a heater. And whenever it's getting colder, the heater should turn on. And that's done by a temperature controller. And the temperature controller, that's my software. And I want to test my software if it's working correctly. Um, and I'm using a canoe. And in canoe, I simulate the temperatures, the sensors, and the heater. So the temperature values are transferred to my temperature controller over soft and the loop adapter, and the temperature controller then transfers the heating state back. So let's have a look how that looks like. This is my temperature controller I'm developing in my Visual Studio 2019. So first, it gets the sensor values from Canoe, so with, with the get sensor value one, two, three function. And then, with the temperature values, it calculates the average temperature. And depending on the average temperature, it decides if heating is required or not. And then, last thing in the set heating function, it sends the heating state back to Canoe. So, pretty easy. I will just start the program and then see what's going on in Canoe. That's my Canoe. Here, I do have my environment simulation. As you can see here, the three temperature sensors and I can adjust the temperature values. So I will start the measurement and I will show you. So I want to cool it down and see if the controller does turn the heater on. Okay, and it does, so it's turned on. You can see here on the right, um, there are the three temperature values. And then you can see the heating state. So if the heater is turned off or on by the controller. Uh, I also do have an environment simulation by model, so that the temperature values are simulated automatically. And I will turn that on and see what my controller does. Okay, the temperature is rising, and right now the average temperature is quite high, was 45, and the heater was still turned on, as you can see here. So, um, right now it's happening again. So that's not what I expect the controller to do, and there is happening something strange. So, but luckily, we do have software debugging, and we can have a look in the controller and see what's going on and debug um, our values. Okay, so for distributed debugging, on the Canoe side, you have to turn it on under your Canoe options. And with external programs, there's distributed debugging. And make sure that this box is checked and that there is a port stated which is available. So in my case, I use the port 2828. Okay, so that's on the Canoe side. Um, let's go back to our IDE, to our temperature controller, and see what we have to do there. Back in my temperature controller, I will first stop the debugger. 
So distributed software debugging comes as a plugin for Visual Studio, so you have to install it. And after you install it, under extensions, you will find vector debug. And in the vector debug options, you have all the settings. Okay, first, what you should do is you have to state in URL. So in my case, um, Canoe runs in localhost and with the port 2828, that's the port I just had in Canoe. Then at the top, you can see the Canoe coupling features. So this feature is about the coupling of the debugger in Canoe. So whenever the debugger goes in a break, Canoe simulation also goes in a break. I won't activate it here because um, I just want to debug the pro program and transfer the watch expressions. But what is activated is that the canoe measurement starts automatically when the debugger is started and also that the canoe measurement stops automatically when the debugging is stopped. Okay, and here you can see the watch expression transfer to canoe settings. So that's also already activated so that the watch expressions are sent to canoe. And also it will send all local expressions in the current stack frame. Okay, that are my settings. And what I have to do is I have to set a breakpoint because watch expressions are sent whenever the debugger hits a breakpoint. And um, as I said, it will send all the local expressions. So local is um, related to the where the breakpoint is. So in my case, these are all the variables which are in this scope, so in this function. And I will set the breakpoint here because then all the local variables are set. And then the last thing we have to do, um, you find the breakpoint settings when you click right on the breakpoint. And there you can deactivate, activate um, the watch expression transfer for this breakpoint. And I will activate the watch expression transfer and also do auto continue that, so that the, when the debugger um, hits a breakpoint afterwards, it will automatically continue the program. Okay, that's the settings we need in our IDE, in our temperature controller. I will start the debugger and see um, which values will be in Canoe. My Canoe is already running because it was started automatically when I started the debugger. And to show you the watch expressions which were sent, I use the trace window. So in the trace window, I see these received variables, you see Rx. And these are all the local variables. Okay, so for example, there's average temperature. The type is a const character, that's already suspicious. But by the way, the character is just a resolved type definition of an in date type. Um, and here I can see the value. But because it's a character, I can't drag and drop it in the graphic window and compare it to the other values. So what I have to do, I have to cast it to an int. And the easiest way to do it, um, I go back to my IDE, to my temperature controller. I will stop debugging and I add a watch expression. So in my vector debug options, here I can add a watch expression and I will just add the cast to an integer of the average temperature. Okay, so now all the local watch expressions are sent and this um, watch expression is cast. So I hit the debugger again and see how Canoe looks like. So back in my Canoe, I now also have the casted one. So here it is. I can see the type is in now and the value. I can drag and drop the value to my graphic window. And then I can see the average temperature here in the bottom. Okay, so it's already suspicious because it jumps up and um, then the curve makes a leap down again, and it seems to be related to the heating state, which goes on and off at the same time. Okay, um, I will have to further investigate what's wrong with the average temperature, and to do that, I go back to my temperature controller, and I see the average temperature is calculated in the calcTemp function. So I will stop the debugger and have a look at that function. Okay, here I see the temperature sum is calculated and I will now just um, place a breakpoint here and do the same for the temperature sum as for the average temperature. So I will activate that breakpoint again for watch expression transfer and auto continue. And then I see it's in a type, so it will be resolved as a character in Canoe. So I will also add the int cast for the temperature sum. So under extensions, vector debug, in the options, um, I have my 
average temperature cost and there I will add my temperature sum cost. Okay, I will start the debugger again and go back to my canoe. In my trace window, I now have not only the average temperature, but also the temperature sum. So here's the one with character value, and here's the one with an integer value. So again, I drag and drop that temperature sum in here and have a closer look. Just like the average temperature, it seems to jump up and down. But here I can see now it's between the values like minus 130 and 130. So these are just kind of the range of an 8-bit data type. So as I remember, I choose for temperature sum the int 8 type. So this looks just like an overflow because whenever the values are increasing over that limit, they will jump down to the negative value. And when they're decreasing, they will jump to the positive value. So it just looks like I choose the wrong data type for the temperature sum. But thanks to distributed debugging, we could find that bug. So I've shown a simple example, which can be extended to a more complex system. Starting from our temperature controller as a black box system with a bug, we could find that bug by visualizing the time evolution of a white box internal debug data with distributed debugging. So don't forget to subscribe and you won't miss any new vector content.